President Cyril Ramaphosa has signed the National Health Insurance Bill into law. The bill sets in motion the government's plan for achieving universal health coverage and seeks to scrap SA's two-tier health system in which the majority of the population depend on the overburdened public health system and a minority have access to private care funded by medical scheme membership. Critics of the NHI bill ranging from organized business to health care professionals say they support universal health coverage, but the legislation is unconstitutional, unworkable and leaves the NHI fund open to corruption. Numerous parties, including medical scheme associations and trade union solidarity, have indicated they intend to litigate. South Africa's retail sector staged a rebound. That's as sales for March rose by 2.3% after a 0.7% drop previously. Today's print comes after two consecutive months of contraction. The general dealer category was largely responsible for the expansion. FNB senior economist Sipaman Lamkwanazi says the print was likely boosted by holiday-related consumer shopping activity. He's added that retail volumes continue to reflect his subdued consumer demand environment due to sticky inflation, high interest rates and depressed consumer confidence. But there's said to be some faint glimmers of hope in the medium to long term, supported by a continued slowdown in inflation and modest job gains. ENX has reported a strong first half performance. The petrochemicals equipment and logistics company has delivered a 5% rise in revenue from continuing operations. It cited increased volumes of polyethylene and speciality chemicals. Headline earnings per share doubled during the period. ENX says the results reflect excellent performances despite the continuing challenging economic conditions. Looking ahead, the company says the most significant macro risks to its performance are potential social and financial market volatility. It's pointed to the possible outcomes of the national elections and the impact of higher global interest rates for an extended period of time. Shares in construction group Stefanuti stocks received a boost today and jumped as much as 14% at one point. That's as the market responded to positive news contained in the firm's latest trading update. The company expects, uh, says it expects its full-year loss for continuing operations to narrow. The shares have ended the day trading uh, over 14% in the green. Full financial details will be released when the company opens its books on the 23rd of May. Higher expenses have weighed on Deutsche Konsumreit and dragged the German firm's net rental income down by 6.5% to 24.8 million euros. DKR invests in high-yielding retail centers with grocery anchors. Most of its rental income is generated by non-cyclical tenants with strong credit ratings, such as large, large German food retail groups, uh, special item stores, uh, chemists and medical facilities. And on continued Western China trade uh, tensions, uh, U.S. President Joe Biden has raised tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles and has significantly increased levies on other industries. Uh, here's our reporter, Nati Devu with more. Well, that is right, Zinati. The friction between the world's two largest economies is indeed escalating. And this comes as the U.S.'s Joe Biden raises tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles, advanced batteries, solar cells, steel, aluminium, as well as medical equipment. This, of course, does affect all other industries involved. And joining me now to shed more light on the White House's move and how it plays itself out in Europe is DW's correspondent, Chiponda Chimbelu, who is currently standing by in Berlin. Chiponda, thank you so much for your time. What are the details of this recent tariff hike? Thanks for having me. Well, President Joe Biden is hiking tariffs on many Chinese imports. The main one, which was w widely reported already, are the tariffs on electric vehicles from China. Now, they will be more than quadrupled to 100 percent. And then tariffs are being tripled for Chinese electric vehicle batteries, steel and aluminum imports. And the rates for Chinese sem semiconductors will be doubled. 
Other products, of course, are also included in what is the Biden administration's biggest announcement of tariffs on Chinese products. In terms of trade, that amounts to around $18 billion of goods from China being affected by the tariff hikes, according to the White House. It's also worth noting that not all the tariffs and levies are taking effect immediately. They are slated to be implemented between now and 2026. And while the biggest increase in tariffs targets electric vehicles, some analysts see the move as largely symbolic. Now, that's because Chinese EVs do not account for a huge chunk of the market share like they do here in Europe. And Chiponda, give us the insight on how the news of these tariff hikes have been received in Europe. Well, the situation in Europe is quite different, and that is something that we heard German Chancellor Olaf Scholz mention when he was asked about the new U.S. tariffs on Chinese EV imports. He noted that at least 50 percent of the electric vehicles made in China that are imported to Europe are made by Western brands there. German car makers in particular are extremely active on the Chinese market. Now, here in Europe, the EU is also investigating whether Chinese electric vehicles have an unfair advantage over European-made EVs because of Beijing's subsidies. And there are some fears about potential retaliation from China, which Beijing has already signaled. Businesses fear that they may also have to face restrictions on the Chinese market. And Chiponda, what will this mean for the industries affected? Well, the fear in Europe is that now even more Chinese goods in the targeted industries will be heading to Europe due to U.S. protectionism. There are worries that we may see more Chinese electric vehicles, for instance, and they already account for around 30 percent of the European electric vehicle market. The Biden administration's move puts pressure on Brussels to do more to protect the affected sectors here in Europe. Now, those include the auto industry, chip makers and manufacturers of batteries and solar cells. While companies that do business in China are concerned about retaliation, industry representatives say more needs to be done to protect European manufacturers. And of course, that's a move that would also protect jobs on the continent. But there's much concern here in Germany in particular. Many businesses have benefited from China's economic boom in the last decade. And with operations in China and suppliers there as well, they may have to, more to lose, actually, if the trade dispute between the EU and China worsens. We'll definitely be watching those developments quite closely, Chiponda. Let's leave it there for now. Thank you so much for your time. That was DW's Chiponda Chimbelu.